we've reached a holiday edition of The Signal Watch. Yuletide movies, television, comics, and more. I'm your host of Christmas Present, Ryan Steens. Join me and our caroling cadre of co-contributors as we examine Christmassy artifacts of the 20th century, merrily explore the 21st, and try to put it all in North Pole-spective. Stay frosty. We're going to try to make this work. Happy holidays, Danny. <laughs> Happy holidays to you. I'm uh, uh, I'm very impressed. Like uh, you are you are dressed in a full Santa suit. Yeah, for this I don't, podcast. I, I, right. I don't like to do these unless I'm really feeling the spirit of the season, and the only way I can do that is under four layers of Santa suit. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a little model train going around. It's amazing. Yeah, that that took me approximately 1,200 just, hours to assemble. I bet, very, I, bet, I, bet, I bet it did. <laughs> um, and 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 uh, but you you're uh, you're not wearing a Santa suit. I, I noticed. No, I just all I did was drink eggnog. But yeah. I've been doing but I've been doing it for a while. So um, <laughs> that was my that was my seasonal contribution to the program today. Um, I am I am all nogged up. Your your other contribution was picking uh, what we were going to do, which I deeply <laughs> appreciate. Um, yes, this is our this is our uh, our Christmas special. Yeah, welcome to the superheroes everyday Christmas special, Danny. Would you like to tell people a little bit about superheroes everyday if they don't know? About I would it? love to. Superheroes everyday uh, is a comedy blog, which I write about the history of superhero movies in order and in detail, and it is super fun. Uh, so far, I've written about Superman, Superman 2, Swamp Thing. Right now, I am stuck in 1983 uh, with Superman 3, and I'm going to move on from there. And uh, and so, like, I'm glad that we're talking about Lois and Clark today, because that's actually, it's going to tie into what I'm writing about right now. Excellent. Yeah. Um. So did you, did you watch Lois and Clark when it was on the air? I did. Yeah, I watched, um, I definitely watched, like, most of, if not all, the first season. Mm -hmm. uh and but i definitely like dropped out possibly like early to mid second season i think okay yeah i liked it okay this was what 1993 to 1997 Mm -hmm. did you watch it i didn't um it was not for lack of interest in anything that was happening with the show uh it was that i believe the airtime was like eight o'clock on sunday night sundays and that I was, I had just, it was my freshman year of college when it started. So it. I, I watched the pilot was like, neat. I have homework. <laughs> and I basically was always doing homework when it was on. I didn't, I didn't really watch much television from well until I got out of wow. college, to be honest. You were very serious. Uh, I'm a really bad student. Um, so <laughs> so- everything took me forever. So Sunday nights were homework night kind of, yeah, no matter what. It. So, um, but yeah, it, uh, it, it, I remember it was super in the cultural zeitgeist at the time, like Dean mm-hmm. Kane and Terry Hatcher were like superstars and, um, yeah, you know, it was like, there was, there was like X-Files and, and Lois and Clark. And so everybody was crazy about Mulder and Scully and then Lois and Clark was, it was like that. It was that kind of craze, but in like lower volume. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it uh, certainly seemed like it was hitting a different demographic as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it seemed to be hitting a slightly, I would say both older and younger and X-Files kind of skidded right through like all the 20 somethings for watching yeah. X-Files. So. And this was a weird era in like superhero media. Um movies and tv because this was the this was the decade that where batman was really the only 
superhero movies. So like the first decade from like 78 to 88 is mostly Superman movies. And then 89 to 97, the only superhero movies are Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, and Batman and Robin. And they get increasingly gaudy and absurd. Um, and that's a whole thing. But like, but, but it's like every, all the other superheroes were like, okay, no, that's good. We're good. Like you just go. Um, and so everything cinematic was, was Batman and, uh, and Superman kind of took over TV. So yeah. it was like Lois and Clark. And then after this, it was Smallville. And so like, this was where, you know, television was where the Superman stories were happening. Which is, which is bizarre. Um, <laughs> Superman is, you know, the, the person who they would say he's so hard to translate to screen, but it's like, but people have done it at 22 episodes a year. Yeah for you know four years of this show 10 years of smallville uh mm -hmm. six seasons of adventures of superman um and now we've had and now like supergirl and all yeah yeah Clark three seasons of yeah of superman and lois that's that's currently running mm -hmm. so it's 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 always to me a really fascinating thing that people are like there's no stories to tell them like well clearly that's not true <laughs> yes, obviously there are lots <laughs> there's an infinite number um yeah and something that is that i think is so interesting about like superman going from like big t big movie epic onto television for a decade and a half um is that then it uh for one thing they don't have the budget so they can't do like big budget epic things all the time it's you know a lot smaller a lot cheaper less special effects um and then also it, it kind of makes the people more important and especially mm -hmm. doing like 22 episodes a year like really it's about you know, in Smallville, like it's about Clark Kent and and his friends as they kind of go through life. Um, One hundred percent, yeah, it's very. And so you get you get a lot more, yeah, of character stuff, and um, and that kind of changes the way that people see Superman in an interesting way that I do not believe touched the uh, the comic books at all. Yeah, the relationship between the comics and, and the show was clearly like if you watch any of the documentaries about uh, why they killed Superman in 92 and then yeah. like, the wedding stuff later, like Louis Simonson and them, they were aware the shows were on, but they weren't mm -hmm. they weren't involved with them. They were two completely parallel, you know, creative tracks. Um, and it has really been surprising to me over the years how. Like the, the people who were, were writing the Superman comics in this era were the people who'd grown up on Adventures of Superman with, with yeah. George Reeves. And you can feel the impact of that. They kept trying to sneak stuff in from that show. Yeah. Um, but they weren't caring much about Lois and Clark or, or yeah. couldn't, I guess, uh, except for when Warner Brothers would be like, you can't let them get married right now. And they're like, what? <laughs> what that was a whole. Do? Yeah, that was a whole. Um, but uh yeah it's it, it it it's interesting to me how although the things do bleed one into the other um like they kept trying to bring the the uh Allison Mack character Chloe Sullivan into the comics they yeah and it just never took like they yeah. none of the writers seemed to know who she was um they just weren't watching the show I guess and so it just yeah and she was and she over. was created in kind of like a very specific relationship that would work for like her being an important character for 22 episodes a year yeah um uh and it's actually you know it, it kind of hadn't occurred to me that like um you know you think of like comic books and they go on forever and there's so much of them but like if you are actually making 22 one-hour episodes of a Superman show in a year, that's more content than the like 24 pages of action comics every year, like 12 times a year. Yeah. At the time it may have been the one period where there was more Superman content than TV, even though the TV series was on because it was the, it was the like triangle Superman era. action comics. Oh, and the triangle. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was man of steel and adventures of Superman. Yeah. yeah. There were four yeah, ongoing. So you could pick up a comic Superman comic 52 weeks a year, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, plus true. annuals, etc. Yeah. Um, and but yeah, I've thought about that a lot of like the them really worrying, and it's something that the the comics I feel have really like if you read the comics from this era, it's, the '90s aren't my favorite era of Superman comics, but mm -hmm. um, they were worried about who the characters were at this yeah. time, and they did yeah. a lot of stuff of like who's Bibbo and like <laughs> what's going on with Gangbuster and. You know, who is double X? What does he do during the day? And, yeah. and 
th- that's something that now in the comics it's incredibly partially because they bring people on for six issues and then they leave right. but it, it, they have a really hard time doing anything but resetting every six to 12 months on the yes. superman comics yeah it's a little better than it used to be the past few years but it's it's a it's a well, problem there's now there's guess. yeah there's there's more with his son now which kind of forces the the rest of the story to it's probably now set a new like status quo that we'll need to get reset every six months from now. Mm. Yeah. Um, and, 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 but that's, yeah, but that's a big, a big change. Like Kevin John's a big January. Change. Yeah. Um, oh, there... Well, I, it, it's to really establish John as Superman B or whatever he is. Yeah. Superman Delta. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> young, young Superman. Yeah. Uh, which I, I'm, I'm excited about, but, yeah. uh, but yeah, this is this, the show really stuck to, for the first season, the, the kind of classic arrangement yes. of Superman, uh, Clark Kent, same person. Lois doesn't mm-hmm. know they're the same person. By the time you get to this episode, they're married. They know everything oh, they've been, about each other. Yes. Yeah. Um, so actually before we, before we get into that, just like, I just want to talk about kind of like the basic appeal of the show as far as I'm concerned, which is Dean Kane, um, who I personally found very compelling at the oh, time. Yeah. Like in 1993, he had a place in my life. Um, cause he's gorgeous. Like, I think he is like the, the second hottest Superman that we have ever had. There's like Henry Cavill and mm-hmm. then Dean Kane and Christopher Reeve. And then everybody else, as far as I'm concerned. Like, I don't know if you rank Superman by hotness or not, but I do very little else in my life. Well, I remember uh, quite a bit of buzz when Tyler Hoechlin got cast. Tyler Hoechlin is good looking dude. If I looked like that, I'd be happy when I wake up every morning. <laughs> Dean Kane, though. Like, you know, not now, sure. but like 30s, yeah. you know, early 30s Dean Kane. Um, and there's just, and so like, this is the fourth season that we're watching and, um, and like even fourth season, like there are like the money shots are looking into his face and he smiles yeah. and they like every once in a while, they just make sure that they have that because like, that's the, the key frame that everything else moves around as far as I'm concerned. It's it's a really interesting dynamic on the show because I it was originally designed, as far as I can tell, mm-hmm. to appeal to women um, and the relationship between Lois and Clark. Let's do a moonlighting yes. sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But it worked for everybody. Um, and But because of that, I don't think that ever really left the DNA of the show. Yeah. Of Terry Hatcher is just gorgeous just by existing. Like yes. she, yeah, she is. She can show up after a four day bender and she looks fine. <laughs> Doesn't matter um, her hair, her hair. I, yeah. I that, the one thing that bothered me about the show is I really didn't like her first season hairstyle. Oh, I. This I is how. Care. This is how yeah. I was. Yeah, this is how I was watching <laughs> Lois and Clark. Just paying um, very, very close attention to the um, the superficial things. Well, she she was wearing the hairstyle that I think they brought in in Man of Steel, if I remember correctly. Um, so she had kind of the bob that season. Right? Yeah, it's just like this pear shaped, yeah, bob. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like, but I I like her in this episode. Um, yeah, yeah, and her and her outfits are great. She's really fun. Um, yeah. So so the show was kind of a romantic comedy for the first season, and then second season, like ABC started meddling with things. Um for better or worse. And second season, they tried this. I understand this from reading about it. Uh, they tried to go in a more like action adventure direction and, and like less of the um, romantic comedy. Cause they wanted men to watch um, and apparently didn't work. And so they kind of pivoted back mid mid second season. Um, That's interesting. Okay. I knew that they'd done that pivot, but I was yeah. watching this one going, this feels really the same spirit of the first season. Yeah. Even though I'd yeah. heard that. Okay. Yeah. They got back to it. So season three then was like, it starts with her accepting his proposal because she found out that he is Superman. And so that was like the big season three premiere. Like now everything's out in the open and it went towards them getting married like late later in like halfway through the season. Um, and then there was some kind of manipulation where I think like either ABC didn't want it then or Warner Brothers like or, or DC Comics didn't want it then. Um, and so instead of it all builds up to like the middle um, where she gets married and then he does get married. But it turns out that she is, I believe, a frog. 
I think she's a or a clone. I don't, like I say, I have not watched these episodes, but yeah. this is what I understand. I think she's a clone that's made out of frog parts. Um, and so things started kind of going badly from there. Um, so what we're watching, the Christmas episode, hooray, is called what the hell is it called? Uh, I'm was marrying, the night, yeah, it was the night before Mixmas. Uh, so this is like fourth season. So they actually got married like early in the fourth season, and now this is like halfway through the fourth season. So now they're married. And walking around. Yes. And everything else about the premise is is basically what you'd expect. There's like Perry and Jimmy and you got his parents and you got her parents. Um, and everyone is adorable and happy. Well, sort of. Uh, and then we're going to get into that today. Yeah. Well, I mean, even talking about um, the the what you would expect, uh, I, I think until... I don't know at some point, but if you read the comics now, the, the writers basically do not understand how the daily planet's supposed to work. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's an ongoing problem for me as a Superman reader of they'll have Superman in the daily planet for like five pages of the first issue of a new run. And then he never yeah. returns to it for like 15 issues. He's out in space a lot these days. He's out in space a ton these days. Um, yeah. And I, I used to blame it on Dan Didio uh, kept trying to make Superman not be a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, there was one point with the. Why did Siegel, he, wait, why did he want that? Um, I think. What a silly, what a silly thing for him to want. Well, I, I think there was a point of legitimate fear during Dan Didio being editor and then publisher where they weren't sure the Seagulls weren't going to claim ownership of <laughs> Superman. Okay, And there's a whole return to Krypton storyline that if you kind of read between the lines of what are they doing here, yeah, it seems like what they're trying to do is make it so they don't have to kill Superman, but they're definitely testing, like they don't want to do death of Superman again. Right. But they take him basically, he goes and sits on another planet, huh. not on frame for like half a year. Wow. Well, they okay. basically tried out new Supermans. Uh, like they brought in mon um, yeah. They brought in like uh, Flame Bird and Nightwing and like all these other characters. Hmm. And maybe we'll make Power Girl the new Superman. You know, who knows? Right. And none of it really took. And then the Seagulls kind of tamped it down. Um, and Incident. by the time. Okay. Yeah. But it's if, if you. If you look at what they were doing, like the new 52 to me, the entire explanation for it is we need a Superman who does not fit the IP claims of the Siegel lawsuit. Oh, gosh. He's, he's now in yeah, armor. So he's he's young, no longer in right, tights. Yeah. yeah. He's he's not a reporter. He's now like a web yeah. blogger or something. Like there was all this stuff that it was like if you went item by item of what's in Action Comics, number one, they could have claimed uh, yeah. as their own. Um and Lois and he aren't ever together during the new 52. Yeah. So it's, it, it was a fascinating, uh, that was, experiment. And that turned out to be a mistake. <laughs> and I, mean, I think, uh, and I think many, like many the big, levels. and as far as I know, like the big thing, you know, when, what it turned into convergence. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, I, I believe like the big driver of that is like Superman and Lois, Clark and Lois from the old universe kind of coming into this new universe. I've wondered about that for a long time. Like if I it, if I understand anything. It, well, they they introduced that they had survived whatever happened with Flashpoint and they were in pocket Gotham and Superman had no power, so they'd had a son. You know what? And but they didn't do the the like oh and, and they must have sold like hotcakes because it was like all the old crew writing and drawing it, and then that's who they brought back to do the initial like Oh no, the Superman you've always loved is in the new 52 universe, just hanging out secret. Yeah. So you know, you know what? We're um we're going way off where we Oh yeah, yeah, right yeah. Now. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I am actually super interested in this and I'm yeah. loving it, but actually we are yeah. not talking about Lois and Clark at all. Right. Um but uh if I could take a different detour, yeah, uh, if that is okay with you. Yes. Um kind of the way that this that this is tying into me writing about Superman 3, uh I had this question and um, I'd like to know your take on this, um, which is like the big question, I think, when you're writing Superman is, is he Clark dre- who dresses up as Superman or is he Superman who disguises himself as Clark? Like, which is the real character? I think there is a hard cut on that. And I think there are two separate answers. And I yeah. think pre 
Crisis on Infinite Earths, it's clearly Superman disguises himself as Clark Kent. Yeah. And I think you can go back and look at all the Superboy comics for all the any information you need on that. Like yeah. he doesn't grow up as Clark Kent. He grows up as Superboy disguising himself as a nerd. Right. Um, who only Lana Lang will talk to or whatever. <laughs> um, you know, Pete Pete takes pity on him. After Crisis, it is very clear to me he is He's, Clark Kent, yeah. who puts on this suit, he's not embarrassed by it, but it mm-hmm. wasn't, he didn't really know what else to do to have two different lives. Right. Um, and that's what gets presented in like Smallville and, and yes. uh, yeah. Superman and Lois. And, and, and Lois and Clark was very much like that because it's a romantic comedy like that. I think it was really super, like a big part of what this is, is that he is actually Clark and therefore like he doesn't have to be clumsy and stupid and shy and unconfident. He's just a, he's a gorgeous dude. Um, because, but like, but he's the real guy. Um, and then like I said, like Superman is, is the suit that he puts on. Um, which I think makes way more sense psychologically. Like, because I think like he was like Superboy comics aside and they, in, including like when he's super baby, all that aside, like if you actually look at, at what, any normal reading of the story is is that he would grow up as clark um and that would be kind of his psychology and the idea that like he discovers that he has superpowers and then sheds his old human identity is Mm -hmm. kind of creepy to me yeah i mean i think i think that's how you end up getting into a lot of the like what if superman were bad you know kind of yeah. uh like yeah, it, it's a hard story you ever read, yeah if, i don't know if you're ready or redeemable or not uh if if, if folks out there haven't it's i think might get adapted it's by mark wade it's um one of many versions of that story but it certainly tells you what happens when he sheds the human identity and not yeah. for the not for the better right yeah that he kind of like comes into his own as a different, like a evol- more evolved, like powerful creature. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a horror story. It, and absolutely. I, and 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 I like the the definition of like Clark as 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 they do it here, um, because it means that he's like a well-adjusted adult person. And mm-hmm. I just think there's like there's something fundamentally sad, um, you know, which is partly like in, including in you know the first two Superman movies of that like. I, I think they're playing it as he's Superman and he spends the majority of his life trapped in a disguise that he doesn't believe in and possibly doesn't even like. And he has to like stand around and wait for a crime to be committed for like the brief moment where he can exist as himself. And I think that's very sad. Yeah. I mean, the Silver Age certainly plays it as here is this God being living among you, yanking your chain constantly yeah. right i mean that's yeah. that's essentially the sitcom the 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 silver age is like all sitcom superman right because they can't do violence at this point and right. so it's and they, and they can't do and they can't do actual human emotion right they do so, like melodrama emotion yeah yeah and and you know occasionally like at, depending on what was going on with editor mort weisinger um they would they would get into some stuff but um there's there's famously people believe whatever he was talking about in therapy ended up in the comics. <laughs> um, and, but yeah, it's a, I, I, I think it's a really, it's not a horrible take, but you know, the idea of Superman being a newsman was he doesn't have a desk where people are looking for him nine to five. Yes. Yeah. Um, which you don't really get time for in the, in the Christopher Reeve movies. Right. Um, you have your setup and then he's, usually he's got a lot of stuff to do yeah 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 um but yeah i don't think it it, you know in the old tv show clark is not clumsy clark and superman are the same dude wearing different clothes right yeah um it's just the fact that people don't know they're the same person and so it it plays kind of a and i think that's some of the tone they tried to take with clark in the 90s of Hmm. He's he's a dude, and he's friends with all the people at the planet, and right. that's who, and and Superman occasionally shows up, and it's kind of a deal when he does. But it's like the district manager showing up; everyone gets <laughs> a little excited, and then he goes yeah. away again. Um. So yeah, it's a, it's it's, 
I, I very much more like the take. I, although I love, I grew up on Christopher Reeves, you know, kind of like, yeah. I'm going to do the, the Clark Kent bumbling to the nines. Yeah. The, the common kind of idea out there in the public of Clark's uh, a bumbling idiot yeah. um, is, is almost solely to me derived from that. Like there's, he would do yeah. things in the comics that were very human or goofy to throw Lois off the scent or to, but he wasn't like a, yeah, he wasn't like a comic right. character. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, um, and and so like, so yeah, I was excited when the show started, and I knew yeah. it was going to be this version of Clark yeah. Kent, of like I Clark so. Kent's like going to be a dude who can like go to work and meet people and not and, spend every episode tripping over his shoelaces. <laughs> and and he cares about this life that he has. Like this mm-hmm. is not like the sad disguise that he wears just to look look meek. Um, this is, this is the identity. These are the friends. This this is like the place where he wants to be. And it's just every once in a while he has to go and be Superman. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's much better when Clark genuinely yeah. wants to be a journalist, like whatever is it within him yeah. that makes him yeah, want to exactly. tell the truth. Uh, yes. Yeah. If he wasn't Superman, that would be what he did. And he would, and that would be a, a perfectly fine life for him. Also, he has insane superpowers, right? <laughs> which gives him, which gives him like more responsibility and weirdness. Yeah. Um, and so let's get into this episode. So this is the Christmas episode um, for Lois and Clark's last Christmas. Uh, they are married. They're doing Christmas shopping. And Lois starts out just super stressed out about their Christmas plans. Um, yeah. She's real like, I don't know what I don't know if, she, if this is like a one episode thing or if this is kind of how Lois was um, in the fourth season. But like she seems very stressed out and and unhappy in a way that and so i'm not sure if like if it's that way because uh you know because they have to they're doing the thing of like oh she doesn't believe in christmas and then she will um but i'm looking at her and she's like we're never gonna get the house in shape on time and i'm like you're married to superman and she acknowledges that she calls it cheating i'm like yeah without super cheating she yeah. says it's like let him cheat. how is that cheat? yeah let him cheat what is the matter with you yeah no one's mad when the flash like does the di- does the dishes <laughs> real fast really like fast. It's, it's fine you have you have a gorgeous cheerful devoted husband who can fly and you are surrounded by people who adore you and you're unhappy because you have to make more stuffing I I I believe it is written specifically for this episode. And yeah. one of my thoughts on that was, you know, when the show started, they definitely did the like, she's the hard bitten, you know, yeah. big city news gal. And by this point, she's more of I'm going to be the counterpoint to whatever Clark is feeling, so we can have a discussion about oh, the, okay, theme right. of the episode. Yeah. Um, and it's just a little disappointing. Like I can see her like being like, ah, oh, the city is such a hustle and bustle during the holidays with all the tourists, you know, yeah. those sorts of complaints. But like our loving family is coming to see us. It's not a good look, Lois. But at the same time, having hosted many holidays, you do have a little like. Oh, oh absolutely. No, yeah, I know yeah. that. But I'm also like... not. I don't have super speed. Yeah. Uh, so. And you're not married to you're not married to 32 year old Dean Kane. <laughs> No, I'm not. I just seriously, I just seriously, like, how can you even like? So you, wait, your bar here is really that if you're married to Dean Kane, all is good. I don't see what you have to complain about. <laughs> your, your complaining days are over. Seriously, after. you're married. You're married to 30 year old Dean Kane with his hair all done up, real nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he follows you around like a lovesick puppy. Yeah, and is just completely crazy about you. Yeah. Um. Do you need? to learn the concept of wonder like your life is is wonderful i would say i I, don't know now i don't know i'm not by the way i'm not saying i don't know what dean kane was actually like in his life i'm just saying like the one that is being presented to me which i accept i so i i met dean kane at one of the very few cons i've been to he was a delight when i met him uh we we had some jokes uh back and forth uh, about some vine stars that were there yeah and um then was very disappointed uh in his recent heel turn but um is he i forget what it is but he's he's disappointing politically now is that the idea 
Yeah, I hate to say it, but yeah, I mean, he, he's he's beyond like you know yeah. your your uh, your your standard issue conservative, which you know I'm, I'm in Texas, I have no problem with that. Uh, for the I most just part. I'm not. It's uh, so funny. Like I I'm vaguely aware that that is true, but I'm not looking into it. Yeah, don't. You'll just be because sad. because like 1993 Dean Kane is still very important to me, and I'm not <laughs> I'm not going to let whatever he has turned into ruin that for me. Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 uh, yes, I have my own '90s figures who have who have done the the same heel turn, and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> yeah, just, um, oh is it Hercules? I have paid attention no, to, to no. sad Kevin Sorbo. It was it was uh, Christy Swanson who was the original Buffy. Has, has oh. yeah, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, well, Sorbo, I never cared about one way or I, Okay, I don't know. That was the one that occurred to me is the other '90s one. Yeah. Uh, no. No. Uh, but but yeah, I I I think that they try and do that like city thing of like she's like, well, I see consu-, you know she's being the the yeah, reporter, she's seeing, right? I see consumerism. She's, yeah. And and I kind of I kind of get that, but I'm and and you also know exactly where this episode is going to end the yeah. minute she starts saying all those things. Of, right. Oh well, she'll be won over by the events of this episode in the next yep. 45 minutes. Yeah. So. This is the Superman who saves Christmas. Yeah. And that's fine. I mean, that's yeah. what this is. And that's very yeah. much the place the show existed in. Yeah, absolutely. And so like he goes, like there's a fire and he goes and saves the orphans and she's like, Oh, fine. Go ahead and <laughs> save some orphans. I'll just continue with my grim shopping trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which- uh, I mean, she she isn't able to put things in the trunk of a car. To some extent, I, I kind of get like it's a lot of bags. She is actually, oh, you know, that's true. She is. Oh, I didn't even realize that she is stuck with the bags. Yeah, she's got to walk all over Metropolis. Uh, yeah, which we know is crime ridden. So yeah, we do. Um, yeah, we do. yeah. Anyway, right. but but yeah, that that it, Superman does take off to help the orphans, which is a plot point. Yes, it is. So. Uh, and then Mister Mixic, la Mixius Pitalik. Mm-hmm. Is that how I'm going to say it? That's how I say it. Mr. Mixias Pitalik. Mr. Mixias Pitalik. Exactly. Um, appears. And the eternal question. So this is the, I believe this is the, like the first time that he's appeared in, in Lois and Clark. I think mm-hmm. he makes he makes an appearance in every uh, Superman show like from here on. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is magic. He's an imp from the fifth dimension. And there is the eternal question of how annoying an annoying character should actually be. Like a character who is designed to annoy the people, the characters in the show, like should how annoying should he be to us? I think it's a very delicate balance. I am so glad you brought that up <laughs> <laughs> because I think Lois or a uh, Smallville overcompensated the other way to make him. Then he was just bland. He was just a guy. He was. Yeah. Well, I looked up. I actually I didn't. I haven't watched Smallville. So I, I did look him up and see what he was like. And he was Russian. He's like, yeah, he was, he was like, uh, another uh, handsome dude. He was just like a Slavic dude who showed up and like I don't, caused yeah. some chaos. And then the episode ended and I couldn't tell you like if he did anything actually mixy is like in, yeah. in the episode. Um, I don't think, I don't think he counts. Well, the the, the thing um, is really the best, the best one is the cartoon one, which is Gilbert Gottfried. Yes. Yeah. You just can't top that, that, because he was already charmingly annoying, right? That was his whole mm-hmm. shtick. Oh, and, Gilbert Gottfried? Yeah, that was his thing. And he brought that. He just didn't change his voice. He just did that voice for... for <laughs> he never voices. He never did. Everything he did was, you're, you, if, you've hired, if you've hired Gilbert Gottfried, you, you know, like, that's the thing you're going to get. And that's, you know, that's what you pay for. Yeah. And it, by the way, totally not his real voice. I heard a voice recording sure of him that. leaving a voicemail and it was hilarious oh, yeah. to hear. He just sounds like a regular dude. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, he, but it's that there was one on Superboy. They did. Uh, we didn't even mention the Superboy. Oh, yeah. Show, um, that that one looked exactly like the purple bowler, orange space suit. Yeah version um i can't remember the name of the actor but he's very famous who played who played him um and And then supergirl supergirl had an actually like charming and whimsical and sexy one that's my memory because uh, but i haven't seen it in eight years so i've 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 seen that one he was great um and then there's another one there's a second one that comes and that's thomas lemon uh that's right yeah he yes 911 he's okay yes yeah Um, so they did swap him out on supergirl yeah. I'm not crazy. Okay. No. Yeah. No, there were two of them. Okay. Uh, but this is Howie Mandel, who is 
another famously annoying person. Yes. With his hair all curly and and he has a goatee, like he's from the Mirror Universe in Star Trek. Uh, he is wearing how would you describe a I, frilly lace black space tunic? Yeah, I think he was like pirate. If, he, if you, yeah, I was gonna say space pirate is yeah is pirate space tunic. Yeah, it's a choice. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. It's 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 Howie Mandel was uh not the force he would become again with whatever that game show was. Yeah. Um, he was kind of forgotten after the late eighties where he'd had been a, a top stand-up comedian. A comedian. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's actually not crazy casting, but mm-hmm. I think someone no, should sense. have sat him down and said, here's who Mixias Pitalik is and kind of walked him through it instead of said, just be Howie Mandel, which is clearly what happened. Yeah. Uh, what would you, so what would you, what would you have told him differently? <laughs> um, you're you're insane (laughs) yeah um you have no concept of right or wrong uh in a in a way that um you do actually have a concept of right or wrong it's just not this one Mm -hmm. um and maybe actually impish not uh not not just play yourself like yeah no you're right that yeah that is that actually explains a lot. Now you say it that way. That like that this makes his lick like he knows he's a villain. Mm-hmm. He approaches this like the whole act as I'm a villain and I'm going to do a villainous thing and I have a villainous plan to take over the world. And I know that that's not a nice thing to do. Like he's not insane. Like he's insane in the sense that like it's a completely idiotic plan. Um, and who who needs no, that? Yeah, yeah, and it, and and he has no, you know, he has no regard for like the actual human lives around him. So that you know, he's like a sociopath. Um, but he is, but he he's not just like, oh, I'm just doing this on a whim. It's like, no, he has made a plan for this, and he's approaching it like I'm a villain. Yeah, the whole setup of Mixius Pitalik in the comics is at some point, depending on which run you're reading, he he met up with Superman. And Superman made him feel embarrassed. And so he is, ups- and, and this is something, again, the comic did or cartoon did very mm-hmm. well was he, he sat around in the fifth dimension thinking about Superman and I got to get Superman, but he can only go back like every 90 days. Mm-hmm. And so he's got three months in between every time and, and Superman always outdoes him. And that's the gag. Like yeah. it's, it's a Abbott and Costello routine. Um, and, it's, and it's basically, they couldn't come up with any more villains. Yeah, it was. Yeah, you know, this was what like the late forties. I think he shows up in like forty nine or something. Um, uh, and and, originally in the comics, I don't. Yeah, remember. yeah, I don't know. I, I believe, I believe this case. Uh, and and I think it's a period where like, uh, they're getting out of the gangster. Like yes. he doesn't really, he doesn't really mess with gangsters anymore. But he doesn't have like that many really uh strong villains. There's basically there's Lex Luthor, and that's about it. Um. And so this was kind of like, I believe this is around the same time that Lois had a little niece named Susie. Yes. Who was essentially a major villain. Yes. Um, and so I think, I think, I think Mixie kind of is that, is that era of like, we need to, to like, they're kind of like making it more of a kid thing. And so here's this little like stupid magical imp who comes. And I think Siegel and Schuster really wanted to also do comedy comics. Yeah, I mean that's true. If you look at all the covers of all the Golden Age Superman stuff, when you're not in the middle of the war, yeah, um, it's Superman like you know goofing on Lois or like like right. painting a picture of himself or whatever. Yeah. Like there, there's a like version of Superman that always has had the uh, the strain of humor in the comics, and mm-hmm. Mixius Pitalik certainly played to that. I mean he he yeah, he, he shows up. What's the name? McGurk. He's always looking for McGurk. Yeah. Um, and so that, that's kind of built right into the character of he's this weird small man looking yeah. for my, and if you don't have him saying looking for McGurk when he starts, I yeah. don't want to see him. <laughs> <laughs> so here he's coming in and he's having Mandel and he, uh, and he has a mean plan. Um, and so the whole, the structure of the episode is it, it almost entirely takes place at the daily planet Christmas party. Um, and everyone is there. Everyone showed up. It's a, it's a good like TV party where all the characters show up. And everyone is kind of poised on the edge between joy and despair, mm-hmm. which I think is very clever. 
um, that like Perry's there and he's not with his kids, but he's kind of keeping his spirits up. And the Kents are there and they lost some crops, but like the bank will probably help. And Lois's mom is there and she's angry with her husband. Um, everyone's got like they're just teetering on like, which is then important. Yeah, blood. Jimmy is dating a girl way out of his league, but he he wants to ask her to. I, do, her. I feel bad for Brenda, Brenda the Rhodes Scholar. <laughs> <laughs> dating a cute like a, a doofus with cheekbones like <laughs> like jimmy olsen I yeah find Rhodes scholar is just very funny to me as like a thing for them to pull out for like jimmy to like he's like yeah i'm dating this woman he's getting he's getting like woman advice from uh from lois's mom or not from clark's mom well, yeah he's like she sure knows a lot about women and i'm like who wrote that line? Who let that line end up on the show? <laughs> she, knows. she knows a lot about women. Who knows what she told him? I, I, that's... <laughs> and, then, and then later on, like that she turns into a prostitute with no middle ground at all. She just goes from like Rhodes Scholar, prostitute. Like those are the options for women in 1997. Like you are one or the other. That's what you get. That It, it hurts so much. That's how true that is. Yeah. Like that so, was TV in that era. Yeah. So you got everybody like in the Christmas party and then, and then Superman goes out and he catches a bank robber and he saves a billionaire who falls from a skyscraper. Um, who's like, Oh, I want to give you a reward. And he says, all I, no, I don't want a reward. All I want is your gratitude. And I was like, and maybe like healthcare for all the people who are around you right now. <laughs> like I bet I could, there's some people somewhere in the world that, that would enjoy the money that you were going to give to me. And, no, and he, he just had just, go. just finished telling Lois how sad he was that the orphans weren't about the orphans Christmas. Yeah. So then, although that's, that is where it goes. Uh, so one thing that, that I think is super interesting is um, like looking, there's almost no like real action in the episode. Um, there's hardly any real special effects. It's uh, he has like one, like very brief flying thing, which is just shooting across the screen. doesn't look like anything. And mostly it's like, you know, he's, he flies and he catches the guy and then he's like lowered to the ground and you see the top half of him and the guy he's holding as they lower to the ground on the like crane or like whatever the, the machinery is that he's standing on that gets slowed down. Um, uh, there's also a moment where he like picks up the end of a car that's speeding and he holds it. Um, he like crushes a fake plastic gun at one point and that's it. Like there's really no action in this at all. Like there's, there's a gun and there's nobody even shoots it. Um, Mm -hmm. and so like this episode, I think in the end, the whole show really is about like, how can you tell a Superman story that is legitimately a story that is specific to Superman where it's just assumed that any like action type problems that come up, he could just do that. Yeah. Um, and and so that's not even on the table. Like, you know, is he going to get like shot by somebody or whatever? It's like, no, he can. T- if that's action stuff, like we know, we understand his powers. Uh, and and then the real problem is like social and emotional. And the whole thing kind of hinges on like what Superman stands for and what like Superman and Christmas have in common. And that's why it feels when I was watching it, I. Danny suddenly ran away. Ran away. I'm so I, sorry. No, no, it's fine. I, I knew something. Came I thought. Up. I thought you might. I thought you might. I was just closing the door. I thought you might cover. Um. Yeah. Uh. But yeah. That's why when I was watching this, I couldn't believe how much it felt like a legit, straight up, super like classic yeah. Superman story. Because when you do read the comics, there's a lot of times where they'll show him doing something super as a gag more than anything, but it really is about these other stakes. Yeah. Um, and that's that's why when people are like, "Oh, Superman's so dumb, he can do anything," it's like that's not how you write a Superman right. story at all. Yeah, it's not about like who he can punch. Yeah, because obviously he can punch anybody. And yeah. so his problem is they give him problems that are not punchable problems, or at least not entirely punchable problems. Right. I mean, it would have been hilarious if he had punched Howie Mandel, but not not how actually, this episode was going down. That actually would have been hilarious. Now I think about it, um, <laughs> you just like beat him back into the fifth dimension. Uh, so what we have is basically, so like Clark comes back and then what we have is groundhog day, but sadder and on Christmas. Um, I initially ground my molars when I was like, Oh God, they're doing groundhog day. But I was like, this is a good twist. 
I it's like actually this cute. Twist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so like what happens is uh Nixie Spidelik uh turns back the clock, it goes to like uh you get to four o'clock and then it turns back to twelve o'clock. And then and that's when like Clark and Lois enter the Daily Planet Christmas party. And so you have that sequence. We probably go through it what, like five times? I didn't count. I think it's four. Yeah. Yeah, four or five times. Uh and so like and and then Clark like knows Clark recognizes the time loop and something weird is going on like he's outside of it but Lois is not and everybody as they go through each loop they just get sadder and sadder um and then and the joke is like that trapping people in this time loop means that that they have no hope for tomorrow and and so with each successive one like the world is just getting worse and worse Yes. Um, and and it, it's visualized as the Christmas tree keeps getting, it starts yeah. out magnificent and it just get, keeps getting hilariously shittier. Yeah. Um, my favorite part was when like they also, the news keeps talking about at the beginning. Yeah. Oh, these peace talks are going really well in the middle East. We should have a peace accord by, you know, new year by Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. And then every time they come back, it's like, well, things aren't going so well with the peace accords. And then things are yeah. completely off the table. And then like at one of the times before it flips back, Lois is like, to peace accords failing. And everyone's <laughs> to, like, to, to, peace- yeah. <laughs> to, to collapsing peace talks. Yeah. yeah that is the, that's the one line that I wrote down. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's a brilliant. It's such a grim joke. Yeah. <laughs> Lois Lane saying to collapsing peace talks. It's so weird. Um, and so, and then Clark is just so cute trying to like figure things out. Um, and ultimately like the thing that's really crucial is her is like for him to be able to convince her what's going on. And then for her ultimately to believe in him and that unfreezes her and, and like helps them to like turn everything around. Yeah. It, they, they, they are, they do say explicitly, uh, Mixia's Pitalik says, well, Superman's a symbol for hope. And yeah. early on, they don't directly tie that to it, but pretty clearly when Clark makes the connection with Lois, she regains that hope and now she's out of the time loop. Yeah. Um, and you know, we're making it sound really clunky. It's not, it's, it's good TV writing. Yeah. Yeah. For, especially for mid nineties. Yeah. Yeah, I was. It actually, this is. It makes it makes my job here more difficult because I kind of I liked this. I couldn't. I, it's hard for me to like make too much fun of it because it, I think it's actually it's a good episode. I completely agree. I yeah. I am not a person who I've tried to go back and watch Lois and Clark a number of times. I always start over. I make it through about the same six episodes and then I kind of fall off, off yeah. trying to trying to watch it straight through. I know at one point I watched. There's a whole run of like. Justine Bateman's in space and maybe she's Kryptonian and yeah. there's a lot of oh, stuff yeah, going yeah. on. Um, but I, I didn't, if I'd known the show was doing this kind of stuff, I might have, cause I think it eventually moved to Wednesdays or something. I probably would have been more interested in tuning in. Yeah. Um, I, I, I really liked it. It's, it, it yeah. hit a lot of the beats that I'll like in standalone issues of Superman or one-offs. Um, and it felt like that sort of contained, uh, holiday issue you might get. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, I, you know, the ending, the ending is, is ridiculous Christmasness of like all the problems are magically solved by bringing in orphans. Yes. And then like the world is saved by Lois specifically singing Christmas carols. Like it, it's like the, the fate of the universe hangs on a thread and it's whether Lois Lane goes from deck the halls with boughs of holly to fa la 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 if she does not sing this is really the feeling it's like if she does you're not 100% sing correct. fa la 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 the world is destroyed and and fantastic and so like the big moment is she actually goes through with it and then that gets that gets ma kent going and and then once ma kent is going she just keeps on going and the world is saved and the, the world thing. is saved and there's this really good scene of Mixias Pitalik going from person to person to about their weaknesses yeah. of like, aren't you sad that your sons aren't here? And, you know, Perry's like, you know, go they jump in a lake or yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
and it's it the the ending solution is joy um yeah. it, it, in the face of of darkness um so it's corny but it's it it is legitimately cute you know, it goes it goes a little too long. I would say Howie Mandel is a little too annoying. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's some things I I think Jimmy is not great. Uh, <laughs> but like, but the core of the show, the core of the show is like Dean Cain and Terry Hatcher being adorable, um, doing interesting things. Yeah, I I, I they, there's a really good scene of him asking her to be herself um at one yeah. point of like go yeah. off and do this research go base he doesn't say go be lois lane but that's that's the yeah. upshot um and she kind of finds herself again i'm I'm a huge lois lane fan like i i, yeah. I as oh, much as i love superman like i have my 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 little lois shrine as well yeah um and it's it's so cool to kind of see like I mean I love Noel Neal don't don't get me mm-hmm. wrong but that that's a very different take on Lois like in in fifties and sixties Lois in the comics was just bat shit yeah um but like I love all versions of Lois but I love seeing like the 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 Lois that you can see why Superman spotted yes. her and, yeah and and that that feels like this story it's, yeah. it's really good yeah and I think Mar- Margot Kidder I think does that in the first Superman oh. movie. Yeah. She absolutely does that where she's like the the screwball comedy heroine. She's just amazing. And yeah, I think like I think Lois Lane done right. Lois Lane is one of the greatest characters in fiction. Um, she's smart. She's adventurous. She's independent. She's gorgeous. She's got a real cool job that she's amazing at. And like most importantly, she is a nonstop story generator because mm-hmm. all she has to do is just hear that there's something like dangerous or forbidden and she's like oh i gotta go there that's where i'm going <laughs> right? and like and she will not stop until her life there is no way to make her stop until her life is in danger um but like but the the premise the way that the, the way that superman story should work is superman is the most powerful being in the world and lois is even more powerful than he is because yeah. she is the she's the one person who has like who can make him do anything she wants he follows her around like a lovesick puppy and he all he can think about is like how amazing she is and how good she smells and like (laughs) he'll do anything she wants she is the most powerful creature in the world he broke time for lois right i mean that's the one thing we all know is like he oh he turned back time it's like yeah yeah he did for for her yeah her she is the most important person in the universe yeah um and like and there are some aspects of their relationship that he is better at and in charge of like running off to protect people from an exploding volcano. Uh, And then there's other aspects of their life that she is in charge of, which is basically everything except for exploding volcanoes. Um, And so, yeah, I think like when the show, when this show is good, it's because they really understand that, that like Lois is actually the most important person. And the fact that Superman is so amazing and is so in love with her. They did. It's the key um... to everything. They they did two maxi series a few years ago, like two three years ago. That if if you haven't read them, I highly recommend go out and check them out. Um, yeah, it was during the Brian Michael Bendis run. One was the Lois Lane twelve issue run. Mm. It basically posits if you're doing a team up of the best detectives in the DC universe, <laughs> Lois Lane's in the middle of that. So is it what Bruce Wayne and, and Lois Lane? It's the question, Lois Lane. I can't remember who else is in, in that hilarious. group, but it yeah. was and it's it's yeah. Greg Rucka. So it's it's like good gritty stuff. And, yeah. and it's like Lois, it's, you know, she's fearless. So she's just like with all these people you kind of know from other DC stuff, really gritty stuff. Lois yeah. just rolls up her sleeves and she's right in there with them. Yeah. Um the, yeah, if, the if you if you write a shitty Lois story. That is on you. That is yeah. 100. Like the character is there for you to pick up and use. Yeah. And if you use her badly, that is the writer's fault. That is not the character's fault. And there's a, there's a, in parallel, a Jimmy Olsen series that mm. is the most insane, best thing DC's put out in forever. It's 12 issues. I totally it's, agree. Yeah. I got the funniest, the, funniest yeah. thing I've read in comics in, in like 20 years. Yes. Totally agree. Yeah. And I Lois gave, is great gave, in that too. I actually, I actually gave that that trade paperback to everybody for Christmas last year. That was like, did you really for last year? Yeah, it was yeah. was because I knew like none of the people that I know have read it, and it's so good. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and so Jimmy, Jimmy should be important as well. Yeah, it, uh, I mean, and that's one of I mean, my. Harry, if I have Harry a beef, sucks. 
if I have a beef with the with the TV show about the characterizations, it's certainly that Jimmy's job is to kind of suck. Yeah, he's just and not in the this. fun way that Jimmy sucks. Yeah. Like, yeah. like I'm, I'm I like I like the way Jimmy sucks on the Adventures of Superman from the fifties. Like, yeah. Um, but, oh, he was Jimmy was adorable in that. Yeah. yeah. Right. He's just, but he's gonna screw up every time. Well, he, he's was, like, he, was, oh. he was a ding dong. Like that yeah. was the ding dong, the ding dong era for for Jimmy of just like. Wah, wah. Yeah. Um, he'll he'll say the stupid like if the stupid thing that's funny like he'll say the stupid thing. Yeah, um, and I I, and I I love that that Jack Larson but he's uh, good. version. Yeah. Um, and and I I I I'm a big Jimmy Olsen fan as well. But um, yeah. it was it was this really interesting era of and I'm I'm hoping that that has not totally fallen away for Lois to become like or the most important thing she does mm-hmm. is be John's mother. <laughs> yeah which is kind of what they've been doing for about a year so yeah. i'm i'm yeah, she's watching gotta get, she's got to get herself back yeah yeah they got to do something then they will yeah. um but yeah I, I i love terry hatcher as lois um she may not be she might be one of my favorite i don't know they're all good um she's a good lois for sure yeah i'm I'm a huge fan of the woman who's playing her on on superman and lois right now bitsy tall yeah yeah. Uh, but it's just a completely different take. It's, you know, mom of two 15 year old boys and it's, yeah. it's just different. Um, but yeah, I, I, I you know, if you're going to do a Superman story and there are lots of Christmas Superman stories, it, it goes back mm-hmm. to Superman's DNA when they basically in like 39 or 40 suggested yeah. Santa is real. Superman has to help him deliver yeah. presents this year um and, yeah, and Sup- superman I, superman like picking up santa's sleigh and flying is basically the most obvious idea in the world <laughs> as soon as you have superman then obviously he and santa claus are friends and obviously if santa claus has a problem superman's gonna gonna help him fly yeah yeah i and i i i you know and i'm fine with those of, of like being like one-offs i i accidentally yeah, stumbled cute. across some youtube thing of like i guess at some point they said santa's a mutant in the in the marvel universe <laughs> oh, really and i is this guy was like going hard at this is in continuity i was like it's not in continuity pal <laughs> i mean it depends on what continuity means to you <laughs> right i was like in your yeah. head canon absolutely yeah. it's in continuity but santa you're I, real. yeah uh um, He's not, he's not showing up for your next Secret Wars crossover. I'll put it that way. <laughs> but that would be amazing. Oh uh, yeah. Now that I, I think be about it. Super sad about it. <laughs> now that I think about it, if there's a big if there is a big Marvel crossover with like, you know, Avengers, X-Men, Eternals, like if Santa Claus showed up, why not? Was, and was just a character in it, <laughs> I would find yeah. that completely irresistible. He'd be with like the holiday crew. I don't like, I don't know. I, I don't can, know what I, I would see. do. Yeah. I just don't know what I would do if Santa Claus showed up and was like one of the X-Men. <laughs> I think we have to make that movie. I uh, right, 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 Kevin Feige. All right, I'm going to get right on that. <laughs> uh, so, oh, so, so, speaking of hopelessness and losing hope, because the mm. whole the whole show is about like everyone's kind of on the edge between like hope and despair. Uh, this episode is the episode where Lois and Clark dies. Um, is ratings it? wise, yeah. Oh. So they, um, the first three seasons, they averaged, like, they did okay. They always did okay. So it's like 18 million for the first three seasons, Holy which is not cow. amazing. Uh, well, not amazing, I mean, you forget now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, no, those oh, are yeah, 90s no, that's numbers. For, yeah. For 90s numbers, that's, it's good. And so, like, they were, like, number 60 for the year, number 68. And then third season was number 44. Um, and so it always did kind of okay. Uh, but the fake wedding in the middle of season three kind of broke the show. So that episode, like people really tuned in and that got like 21 million people. But then it turned out that she was a clone made out of, I believe, frogs. And then like the ratings just started to trend down as people realized like the wedding is not, you know, they're kept tuning in and like, Mm -hmm. I I guess the wedding isn't happening. Um, And so it went from like 19 million down to like 15 million by the end of the third season. Uh, And then fourth season was bad. Like they got like 12 million uh 50 million for the actual wedding but then it went down kept going down and down this episode the christmas episode 11 million and that's the last episode on sunday at eight o'clock you you mentioned like they moved it, it was like they moved yeah. it to sunday they moved it to sunday at seven o'clock okay which killed it yeah so, that'd so be they six did, like, o'clock the, central yeah. Yeah. yeah they did the christmas the christmas episode and then they moved it to seven o'clock 
And that was just disastrous. Like from January on, it was like nine million, eight, seven, six. Like it ended with like four million. Um, so this is the this is the episode where it's like the last moment of hope for the show. After this, like there is no tomorrow for Lois and Clark. I'm afraid. Wow. So it is a very meaningful episode. Yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting in that. In, in some ways in that, like, I don't know if you were reading the Tom King Batman where it's like Batman and mm-hmm. Catwoman are going to get married. And like they were selling like wedding invitations and yeah. shit. And then like you bought the issue and spoilers, they don't get married. Yeah. And I never picked up another Tom King bat cat comic again. I really? Was, yeah. I was, I was just like, Oh, okay like you were going someplace and then you yeah. were like psych and yeah. it's and i can totally see how you lost four million viewers right yeah. after after that happened and then you mm-hmm. lost 10 million viewers and it's yeah. it's in tv shows this... never escape a death spiral but yeah and it's it is uh you know and and so like obnoxious network people were like oh see when they got married like the ratings started going down I was like, no uh the problem was you promised meaningful story progression and then took it back yeah like that's what you know batwoman batwoman i mean sorry about batman marrying catwoman like i i didn't read that run and i don't you know yeah. could have been good could have been bad but like but at least that's interesting and i could totally want to see like not just the wedding but like then what happens at, like what is yeah. that what is that world like? Yeah, I, I don't. Mean? I don't need to see a big bat wedding, but what I do want to know is how. Like, what how are you going to do this? Yeah, yeah. What happens after? And and so it's it's a promise that they made, and and same for this is like Lois and Clark. Like, uh, you know, she knows that he's Superman, and they get married. Like that means there's meaningful stuff that's coming up. And so if they just like yank that away again, yeah. then yeah, they lost they lost people's trust. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't watching any of this when it when it went down. I remember kind of seeing headlines and, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and at the time, frankly, the comics I was reading, I was reading like Invisibles and stuff. I wasn't really paying any. Oh, yeah. No, the, the 90s thoughts. was. Yeah, yeah. The 90s was like Vertigo and Alan Moore. Yeah. Yeah. If you were cool. <laughs> I mean, I, I have a lot are. of friends who were reading reading Superman during this era, and I'm always kind of like, yeah, it's not my, go? <laughs> my favorite era. <laughs> kind of got back, you know, we got into it early yeah. in like 2000 when, when the new creative teams came on. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, <sighs> I, I, I enjoy, you know, if you're going to do a, do a Christmas episode and given the limitations of network TV, um, mm-hmm. you know... And it doesn't get into anything of uh, too ridiculous. The one thing that I thought was really weird was the last line of the episode, which again made me wonder that? who it was like, oh, you made me see the world through your eyes. And he's like, then you're super oh, lucky because yeah. all I'm looking, I'm looking at, at, at is you. you. And I'm like, you're wait, she's lucky to look at herself. Wait, <laughs> what? And I kept rewinding it like that. three yeah. times to go like, what, yeah. did, what? What did he say to her? I don't. I it's don't funny know. that's such that's such a rom com line because it does sound super sweet. It doesn't make like you say like it doesn't make logical sense. <laughs> but him saying it is adorable. It's very and sweet. So, yeah, and it's just about the two of them. It's very cute. I would definitely mm-hmm. say like if if anybody wants another like Christmas television experience mm-hmm. to add to add to their tradition, uh, this would this would not be bad. Yeah, and there's three other, or two other holiday episodes, I guess, of the show. Um, yeah. I'm probably, you know, because I like this one, I'm going to go and watch those ones as well. Ooh. Yay. Um, Are we doing more specials? Uh, I, we're we're we out might. of time we'll for see. this holiday. We'll but, see. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, we got, hopefully we have Christmas 2023 if all goes well. All right, there you go. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a, I totally recommend it. Go dig it up. It's on HBO mm-hmm. max season four, episode 11, um, easy enough to get to. Um, and probably you have dusty old DVDs that you forgot about in a foot locker somewhere that you can mm-hmm. go, <laughs> go enjoy your investment that you made in <laughs> 2003 or whatever. I actually, so. I actually do have the first season of Lois and Clark 
on DVD and have not watched it since I bought it. I actually do too, because uh, I remember it was super cheap. <laughs> it and then super the, cheap. And like, then the other three seasons were like really so expensive. Yeah, there know? was there must have been a moment when like first season DVDs of Lois and Clark was like four dollars or something. Mm-hmm. That is so funny that you and I both were like. <laughs> That seems like a bargain. And now yeah. we have it we have it in our house and have never even opened it. It's fantastic. <laughs> I have no idea where my small to, smallville DVDs are. They're just that's a, gone. Like I, I had I had no. had them all at one point and or the first five seasons and then Legacy Media. Yeah, yeah. I don't throw Superman stuff away though. That's the weird part. I know. It's, they're yeah. just not here. Um so all right. uh anyway, so, uh, go ahead. Do you uh so what is our Christmas present for each other? For each other? Yeah. Um, I'm giving you the gift of, you said you were going to start a podcast. I'm I'm, I'm going to be your All first right. guest. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> That's my gift to you. <laughs> See, my gift to you was to say, like, let's get together and do Catwoman. Oh my lord. Oh, but we will see. We will see. I know we'll I'll the, do it. We'll but see it's... if the spirit of Christmas moves you uh yeah i might think yeah. of christmas think of the wonder think of the magic that's why i'm getting you right now i'm like oh twinkle lights don't you <laughs> don't you have the feeling of hope and wonder well the that thing you, is i've already seen catwoman special. once in 2022 so oh, did you, okay well that's yes. on you that was it, it is 100 nobody on me. that's that's an own goal nobody made me do that <laughs> I have to imagine if I have to imagine any anyone in your life who knew that you were about to do that was was recommending against it. We we did it as a Friday watch party, um, and so yeah, the pain was shared. Do this, all right? Yeah, yeah. I'll every if we're gonna do superhero stuff, I guarantee I will alert you. We will see. All right. Um, Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, cool. Well, uh, now you can. I guess now you can take the Santa suit off. They already, yeah, probably, this, probably this hotter to there. Yeah, getting in my mouth. Yeah. All right. Well, ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas to you, Ryan. <laughs> Merry Christmas. That about wraps it up for this edition of The Signal Watch, a production of the League of Melbotus. Thanks for sticking with us. If you enjoyed the podcast, we invite you to drop on by The Signal Watch blog, where you'll find write-ups of a wide variety of movies and more. We'd love to hear from you, so find us online and let us know what you think. Whether you prefer email, blog comments, or social media, we'll be happy to hear from you. We'll be back soon with more exceedingly high-quality content. So, until next time. God damn it, babies. You've got to be kind.